Hi, Watch Anime Recap here. In today's video, we're going to review the events of the 2009 animated film titled Macris Frontier, The False Songstress. The False Songstress is a theatrical narration of the popular Macris Frontier television series by 8-Bit and Statelight. It's the year 2059, decades after Earth and the Zentradi fought each other. The surviving members of both sides are still exploring the galaxy in quest of new life and habitable worlds. Here we start with the Macros Frontier, the 25th new Macros class colonial fleet on its way to the galactic center. A mix of humans and their Zentradi friends occupy this massive immigration fleet heading out into space. Cheryl Nome is an intergalactic superstar that has captured the hearts of all space fleets. Cheryl is royalty in this reality and timeline. The high-ranking officials see her worth as something of intergalactic importance. So if something ever happens to her, a war would break loose. Cheryl is set to have her concert in the new colonial fleet Macros Frontier. Everyone is excited, including Ranka Lee. Ranka Lee works as a restaurant waitress. She's a huge fan of Cheryl and wants to follow in her idol's footsteps. But she is too shy to even show others her hidden talent. The concert would entail the help of Alto Sautome and his other pilot friends. Since Cheryl is known to have flamboyant concerts, it's expected that the pilots would do the same exuberant stunts as well. Alto is a quiet yet straightforward guy. He looks like a girl with his super rebonded hair. He tries his best to become the best pilot in the frontier. He never misses a day of practice and is always motivated to excel. Ranka arrives with food delivery from the restaurant where she works at. Ranka obviously likes Alto, but Alto is too cold and naive to notice. Ranka brings him his lunch but he politely declines, saying that he needs to be as light as possible when he flies up. He only eats a sandwich and proceeds to practice flying again. Ranka watches him with great awe and admiration. The day of the concert arrives and everyone can't get enough of Cheryl. Her concert is so ostentatious and grand that her fans barely blink during her performances. When Alto's turn comes, Cheryl purposely jumps off the ledge to see if Alto can catch her. Fortunately, Alto has some serious talents in flying and successfully catches Cheryl. Alto scolds Cheryl about her dangerous stunts, but Cheryl only insults him back. Cheryl is an ungrateful woman who only wants things for herself. Well, aren't all idols like her? Before we get bashed, Cheryl has some positive traits too. She's talented, beautiful, and driven at her life's work. When Avadra appears to have broken the last line of defense, Macro's frontier breaks. A reconnaissance new United Nations Spacey, NUNS, VF-171 Nightmare Plus is destroyed by insectoid biomechanical extraterrestrial robots known as the Vajra, that instantly begin their march against the fleet during a mission to an uncharted asteroid belt. An ugly Vajra arrives and wreaks havoc on the frontier. Cheryl and Alto watch it destroy buildings and houses and even kill innocent civilians along the way. It seems like the Vajra is after Cheryl, but nobody knows why. A VF-25 arrives and tries to defeat the Vajra. Alto sees the VF-25 and is amazed at how great the plane is. This fighter plane is still under development, so Alto is surprised to see it on the battlefield. But even the majestic VF-25 is no match for the devastating Vajra. The pilot dies and leaves the jet unmanned. Alto sees this as an opportunity to help, so he runs toward the jet and tries to maneuver it. With Alto's given talent and intelligence, he successfully manages to drive the jet and give the Vajra some critical blows. But he runs out of ammo and instantly becomes useless in the fight. Alto sees Ranka is about to get killed by the Vajra, so he flies toward her and tries to save her. Ranka's brother arrives and saves the youngsters, however sacrificing his life in the process. Ranka cries inconsolably at her brother's death. Her desperate weeps create a strange fold signal to the other frontier pilots, resulting in the Vajra's death. Cheryl is ambushed by Brerus Stern, a mysterious pilot that looks like he has a lot of sinister plans. He scans Cheryl's conditions and learns that she has some slight injuries acquired from the Vajra attack. He carries Cheryl with him and brings her back to Miss Grace. The two seem to know each other very well as Cheryl blushes when she orders Brera to stop scanning her body without her permission. The head of the frontier assesses the damage from the recent Vajra attack. He suspects that there is an underlying motive for the Vajra's attack. The supposed antagonists of the show learn about Alto's heroism and his great potential. Miss Grace shivers in delight as she watches Alto's performance through Brera's scanned videos. While Brera and Miss Grace are busy, Cheryl takes a hot bath while she reminisces about the awful attack on the frontier. She scrubs her legs and thighs and suddenly realizes that she lost her favorite earring in the earlier fiasco. 288 innocent civilians died in the Vajra attack, and the Marcus Frontier is not happy about the damages it has received. So going back, Ranka's older brother is still alive. Uh, yep, sorry about that, but he really did look dead in that scene. Plus, Ranka weeps like she's lost 100 brothers in the war. Anyway, so yeah, Ranka's brother is alive and is recuperating in the hospital. Alto forces him to do something about the attack, but Ranka's brother wants to stay quiet in the meantime. This pisses off Alto so much. On his way home, Alto hears a beautiful voice. He later finds out that it's Ranka. Ranka tells him about her childhood, and suddenly, Alto develops feelings for her. 
The lovebirds go on to talk about paper planes while subtly flirting with each other. Suddenly, Cheryl arrives and compliments Ranka's singing. Ranka is delighted to see her idol. Cheryl asks Ranka what she knows about Imo, but is interrupted by Miss Grace's phone call. Men, mobile phones in 2059 surely experience the greatest things in life. Cheryl is forced to go back to the studio and tells Ranka that they will talk again soon. Ranka wonders why Cheryl knows the song Imo. Alto is officially a member of the SMS, a professional pilot team headed by Ranka's brother. They give him a strange yet nice welcoming party, but Alto doesn't seem to enjoy it at all. That day, Cheryl goes out to see Alto in the streets and asks if he's seen her lucky crystal charm. Alto tells her that he has no clue about the crystal and tries to dismiss her. Cheryl grabs Alto's name tag and hides it under her cleavage, forcing Alto to help her find the crystal. The crystal charm seems to convey feelings during her performances, resulting in why she's so popular. Cheryl proceeds to tell Alto the current lifestyle in the galaxy, reiterating that computer implants and plastic surgeries are now common things. Alto wonders if Cheryl had some plastic surgeries, which she denies. After all, she is branded as an all-natural beauty, making that her ultimate selling point. Alto blushes as he realizes what that meant. Meanwhile, Ranka is upset with her brother for not letting her fulfill her singing dreams. He doesn't want Ranka to become a celebrity after all the efforts he's done to pay for her tuition fees. Ranka decides to sing in the streets to prove that she has the guts to become a singer. All the people admire Ranka's performance except for Cheryl, of course. Ranka's singing activates another signal fold that agitates the captured Vajra. Cheryl kisses Alto goodbye, making Ranka jealous for a moment. Ranka is then approached by a talent manager who asks her if she wants to become a celebrity. Ranka screams in delight and excitement as she starts her big celebrity dreams. She sings for a Nato commercial at a Gundam store even in front of construction workers in a bikini. Despite her brother's disapproval, Ranka continues with her dream. Alto has been crushing on Cheryl after the kiss, leaving Ranka in the shadow of his heart. Ranka feels bad about being neglected, but she is still thankful to Alto for motivating her to follow her dreams. One night, Ranka shows Alto her new single. Alto loves it, but he likes Cheryl more. Ranka tries to be positive about Alto's revelations, but sometimes a woman's heart can only bear so much. With time, Cheryl's immunity to the Vajra-born V-type virus wears off, and her health deteriorates. By August of the year 2059, Cheryl has been hospitalized and has to postpone her concert dates. On the other hand, Ranka Lee's career is only getting started. Cheryl's predicament worsens as she feels deceived by Grace. Then she decides she no longer wants to sing. Meanwhile, as a result of the Vajra conflict, SMS soldiers are absorbed into the new United Nations Spacey Navy garrison, and Alto is promoted to lieutenant. He's appointed captain of the Sagittarius Squadron and pilots of VF-171 Nightmare Plus. At one point, when the Vajra are attacking, she looks at her fold quartz earrings and thinks back to when Alto told her to keep singing no matter what. The stunned residents of the evacuation center watch as she begins to sing for them. Leon Mishima's coup d'etat is a success. He seizes power and removes President Howard Glass. After Island 3 is destroyed, he tries to have Ranga sing at a memorial service, but she refuses and runs away with her brera stern, presumably ending her career. Ranka's understanding of her background and her relationship with the Vajra develops gradually as the war proceeds. She takes part in what would be known as the Ranka attack, an assault on the alien species. Ranka's brother later suffers severe injuries from a lethal Vajra attack. After nearly sacrificing himself with a careless strike, he tells his companions that he has always loved Catherine Glass and that as long as he lives, he will do whatever it takes to defend Ranka. He then suggests they share a slice of pineapple cake, and Ranka says she'll have to think about it. Out of jealousy, Cheryl confronts Grace about why she's managing Ranka. Even more frustrating for Ranka is the fact that she's being used as a weapon against the Vajra. Ranka is summoned with Leon Mishima, fresh from a successful coup d'etat, to sing in memorial service following the destruction of Island 3 by a particularly huge swarm of Vajra. Ranka declines and runs away, deciding that she never wants to sing again. Together with Brera, she abandons the Frontier fleet to go for AI Homeworld. Grace takes possession of a deposed Ranka and uses her to seize control of a Vajra queen. Grace uses Ranka's song to take over the Vajra network, but she's rescued by Alto, Brera, and Cheryl. Next, Ranka sings a duet with Cheryl as Alto launches his final assault on the power-crazed Grace, who is quickly vanquished. Now that good has triumphed over evil, Ranka sails with the Frontier fleet to the settlement they've established. Cheryl gives her crystal to Alto and tells him to keep it. Cheryl now realizes that she's never alone in life. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.